Hi everyone, glad you could join me again for another video, another plain air in Tasmania. We're at Stanley and uh, it's cloudy, it was sunny before but that's life. It's a beautiful scene behind me that I'm going to paint and I'm going to do it on a large sheet of watercolour paper but I'm going to use acrylic paint. And this is my personal technique that I like to use a lot, especially plain, uh, when I'm plain airing. And uh, that's um, large brush, lots of water on the in in the paint and for that reason I'm going to be using my good quality paints today I won't be using the uh, cheaper version I just need the saturated color and uh, that's going to um, the uh, I'll show you Liquitex and Atelier type brands are, the, are my choice beautiful colors thank you very much for joining me please like subscribe that would be fantastic I'll just throw the uh, Jacket can get washed. That's not too bad. Okay, this is where I really have to take some time to think. I don't want any mistakes where I might end up regretting not giving attention to something that's important. So that's the line of the houses. That's going to be the line of the water. That's going to be golden grass behind and the mountain is going to go up here just see if it's big enough i'm gonna have to condense it in a little bit just to get a feel for those buildings out there on the on the wharf And I'm going to be hey. <laughs> and he's letting off a bit. You stay here. You stay here. Sorry. This will distract her. <laughs> Honey, you come back here. <laughs> okay, I'm just putting in a hint of house here. If I take the time to actually pencil these in, um, it's probably good, a good thing now. So I'm going to take a bit of time here to put these facades in, even though they will only be very lightly sketched at the end. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of the actual realism. <laughs> I'm going to run out of space there, so it's just... Not the right houses, that they won't recognise themselves. Flat roofs, pitched roofs. It's more to give a, a reference to how um, small they are compared to their back neighbour. They've got some lovely trees in their backyards. A bit of foliage there. Tree, the, the mountain comes around, they're beautiful. I've got to try and capture that, that lovely curve. A few trees there, a bit of industrial work on the on industrial buildings down there. A couple of lower set shapes here. Which sort of have a combination of my glasses are two there for close ups and not for long distance came away without good glasses. I lost them at a K 
caravan park. Okay. Another building there. Another one in there. I'm hoping you can see this okay without my big shoulder behind. Now the ground, because I'm very low, the ground goes up a bit like that. Comes out to the beautiful waves here. And what I wanted to do is allow a fair bit of space for this foreground, which is beautiful. It's seaweeds of various description and lots of tiny stones, interesting things that I've been photographing, but maybe a future project. Now there's lots of stones here leading up to that area and if I cut these short lead up to a tree or two there. The height mountain and head down that way. So I think I've captured just about everything. The water is quite it's very very small it's it's only about that deep and then we have this wetness which hopefully i can get some reflections from above down into that area um, placing paint on the page that might be the the only time it's used oh, i'll just see what type of paint i've got <laughs> just started by throwing one in the sand actually these I have not boxed up like I normally do um, because I use the box for the cheaper paints. I didn't, I haven't bought a second box yet. They're tackle boxes, I think, or that's one thing you could call them. Um, just putting out a little bit of, the way I do acrylic when I'm working is I put out a couple of colors at once, just small quantities of them. And because I'm doing a very thin wash at the moment, I'm going to put out burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a few of my basics, burnt umber of course. So this is Atelier. Um, these are actually unlockable. You can re-wet them. But to tell you the truth, I've never done that. So I'm putting out a couple of browns, a blue. I'm going to actually, for the sake of um, speed, I'm going to put in a green. I have to choose uh, a good green. What I'm looking for is like a sap. I don't know that I've got one. Okay, here are my two greens. I've got an emerald and I've got a thylacyanine blue shade. Mm, I think I'll go for the bright, brighter of the two because I can knock it back with the um, blues and browns. So that's Liquitex. So there's all different I'm, I'm using different brands. I have Matisse, Atelier, Liquitex. So they're the different. I, heavy body, I don't like the flow. I think it's too runny. I'd rather make it runny myself. Um, the Atelier is probably the best Matisse structure. So, I'm actually going to start with the um, Mixing up, by the way, this is a dirty old palette, but it doesn't matter, that's, that's dry over there. I'm just going to mix up a nice neutral colour, which will have the ultramarine blue in it, the burnt umber, a little bit of the sienna, which I don't know that I need the sienna at the moment because there's no sunshine. So I'm going to use a fair bit of water and hopefully it won't drip. That's going to be my going blue so it's a neutral grey to start with for the rock so I'm going to just run this across it's dry it's um, it's a uh, dry page I haven't wet it I'm going to use some straight line mm. it's dripping already okay I'm keeping it a bit too too wet I'm going to use some straight line detail with my brush. 
not necessary it's got not necessarily the final um, areas but it could be useful later on if I just put in areas that follow the shape of what I'm looking at okay now I'm experimenting here a little bit because I've never used this paper before so I'm interested to see how it goes so here we go with a very bright green and I don't need it that bright actually here I'm saying I can wet it down and I have to so this is fine by me I'm just going to do some colouring like that acrylic the paper is really absorbing probably too much we'll see how it goes I think I've got some yellow in here now. They end up like glazes, one layer over the top of the other. I'll put some, what I might do is, I'm not happy with the way the paint is sitting on this board. I'll just put it straight back into the paper palettes that I normally like to use. I'll scrape all that off there. I'll put the green over there. Grab all that water. Okay, put that down. I'll clean that up later. I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow. I noticed before, oh, that's nice. Bronze yellow. I think it's a new one. I don't think I've used this one before, so let's see. It's probably, oh, I see, it's a little bit um, raw umberish. It's probably perfect raw without having to blend it with anything. So I'm using the big Reeves 2 inch. I don't have a link for it. All I can say is try and find it at your local art supply shop. It's often used for glazing. So I'm going right over those houses and I'll come back of course to do the houses but I'm just going to run this backwards and forwards over that area back into up into the blending okay grab a little bit of green on the brush put it in down here it's a foreground but it's grassy this is good I'm just using the the um, angle, the rectangle shape that this brush allows you is a lot of fun. It's a little bit like doing the painting with a, a knife, a palette knife. You get straight edges. Okay. Learning with this as I go because I haven't used this paper before. It's really absorbing this paint very quickly so as I said it's a cheap paper I'm using quality paints but I have this is the cheapest paper I've ever found and when I saw it on the internet on Amazon I couldn't resist buying it so this is it this is me trialing it now I'm putting a little bit of thicker paint in there it's the it's the tree patterns that I can come back to later now I'm mixing up a brown for that road going up there. Just put that in the street. See, I'm getting bubbles in this paper, which is a little bit not what I want. Okay, so there's an, um, I'm going to do a road here. I'm just going to go for it. I'm not pressing hard because then the, the, um, the brush will splay, but using the end of the brush, I'll put a bit of blue into it. There's bluestone buildings down there, so I'll add those in now water required okay now this edge is rather nice so I think I'll see how I go getting a bit more blue into the brown I'll add some sticking with my ultramarine blue Oops. put that knife down don't need that 
Hi guys, back at the caravan park. We're at a different one. This is uh, a day later from the video that you're in the middle of watching. Um, I had a problem. The um, battery failed, so I continued filming using my iPhone, but I didn't have the proper microphone set up. The iPhone catches the wind and you can hardly hear what I'm saying. In fact, you can't hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to continue videoing, showing you what I've um, painted, but I'll do a voiceover. So I hope that's okay. So this is a uh, fast forward um, about by 300%. So when you see me throwing the paint around, in reality, I'm doing it slowly like I normally do. It just looks fast. But I thought seeing as we haven't got proper audio, I, I just quickly go through this part of the painting. And uh, I could have left it out altogether, but it's fairly major. I'm just adding some dark shade shades of brown and blue mixed together there to create a bit of a reflection dark water look if you look at the reference photo you can see that there's a shade darker half close your eyes you can see that shade of of dark dark wet reflecting the uh, the uh, mountain behind i'm exaggerating the area here of the pile of uh, uh, seaweed it was very high in real life. Doesn't look that from the photo, but it was a big, big lump. Now, these there, I'm using the same gray, neutral gray, the brown and the blue on the cracks of the rock behind. And using that um, flat brush from Reeves, I mentioned it below in the video, below this video. Um, and the edge of it can give you very, very sharp, pretty lines. And uh, it's worth, worth using on edge like that. And then it's a slightly lighter color, but with purple added, pulling across to create the darks. And that's the beauty of acrylic paint, is you do darks right up front, right at the beginning of the painting. Whereas with watercolor, you gotta leave your darks till last. Acrylic, you start dark and work to light. Watercolour, start light, work to dark. Basic rule. So I'm just flicking in. It looks like I'm flicking in, but really I'm painting in carefully the shapes. Anything dark I see in the background there, I'm putting in as purple, or that purpley grey colour. And that would have been the combination of the blue and brown plus, plus purple. So it's not a bright colour. Now I'm talking about, uh, I've mixed up white, okay, so I've got the uh, white gouache, or oh, actually, sorry, <laughs> it's not gouache, white acrylic paint would have been, tita it's titanium white. I'm using a flat chisel brush, and I'm just creating some uh, rectangles and mm, rooftops, what do you call that shape? trepanoids or something I'll have to look it up but uh, there's just the uh, angles of the sides of the gables of the roofs it's all you see from a distance so I'm just putting those in as white at the moment and later I'll come back when that's dry I come back and add a little bit of uh, detail so while I've got white on the brush I'm just using it mixed with a little bit of yellow there I think yep and over the top that little pathway some more details down in the foreground, more buildings. So once I've got a colour on my brush, I, I hunt around for somewhere else to put it. I don't, don't just put colour in one spot, that way your painting won't hold together. But when you have a colour mixed, see how many times you can apply it to the canvas. That way it ties it together. So now I'm mixing and I'm, I'm taking that warm colour, I've added a little bit of blue into it and it's made a nice warm light gray and I'm painting in those rocks. The rocks themselves are very whitish, so grayish. So I'm just 
there that's me using that same color adding it into the foreground now I'm making it a little bit warmer in the foreground because theoretically warm towards the front cool towards the back that means yellow towards the front blues towards the back that's a sort of a, a rule of thumb for cl classic uh, landscape work now I'm putting white back over the top of those uh, areas I'm just creating a bit of light on the left I'll come in and add some white spots to make it look like stones tops of stones That brush is a standard um, a flat um, nylon synthetic style brush you pick up anywhere. Any basic kit will have that type of brush in it. But that's it, links below. I'm not a fan of small round brushes. I like them flat. I like to have a chisel edge. That way you can you can go flat or you can go and get a thin line out of them or you can get a nice chunky shape. So I'm putting some more paler colours over those rocks in the background and adding sandy colour into the sand area. And same with adding a little bit of that light brown creamy colour out into the water so that it looks like you can see through the water to the sand below. Now I'm mixing a very dark looking colour here. It looks like I've got uh, ultramarine, blue, brown, purple together. Grab your three darkest colours, mix them up, see what interesting dark grey you can find. And so I'm using that as the uh, on the edge of the brush I'm making lines that are to be branches for those trees and the trunks of the trees. If it was winter you wouldn't leave you wouldn't have the leaves on those trees. Well these ones might be evergreens but uh, in America and Europe you have um, just the spindly branches which would look lovely. So just added some details in the back there to make it shadows underneath the bunches of leaves and now I'm adding the shadows using that same dark color creating rock shapes by drawing around the rocks kind of like drawing diamond shapes I'm using the brown in the distance there to uh, add another layer of interest to those lines coming down to adding more uh, crevices in the rocks quite magic this fast forward it's almost like the paint appears on the page before the brush hits the page <laughs> so don't be fooled it's not that fast we're just whizzing through this section and I've added in a sort of a light brown raw raw umbery thing I'll have the name underneath Just putting those that, that colour over the top, some of the area that I intend to create as foliage. And I'll throw some bright green in. Probably not the right colour there now that I'm looking at it in hindsight. Could be could be a lot um, yellower, I think. Anyway, using that green. And often the um, creative, this is where the personal creativity comes into play. You don't have to have skies blue. You can have a sky that's red or yellow. You can have color, trees any colour you like. So this is the fun part of being an artist. You're in charge there. I'm, I'm knocking that bright green back with some yellow over the top. Good. There's a big tree in the foreground there. I'm using that rigger brush. It's a new rigger I've bought from Momatra, which is a um, fairly cheap supplier of paints here in Australia. The um, 
it was okay. It was just a, a rigger is a long thin brush, and you can use it. Sign writers use them to create swirls on the sides of trucks and other places. But uh, I love to use it because it gives you a nice thin line, splashy line, contrasting to your fat paint work if elsewhere. So looks like I'm adding some white. I think I oh know what colour is this going to be? Okay, more dark grey. So a combination of um, blue and brown. Now I'm going to the white. I'm adding in a few little spots here and there to make it look like street lights in the distance. And now I've gone back to dark to make the poles for the lights. Now I'll probably go to white and put the spots on top of those. Okay, while I've got the white on the brush, I'll fiddle around with that on top of those rocks. Just the tops of them to make it look like the sun's on, the sun's shining. And I'm just dragging the white across the sand to uh, give the impression of spots, spots of white. That's the, the dry brush technique. You, you could use any brush for this. You don't need to. brought the painting back and I'm, it's in the, the trailer and I'm going to finish it using um, my paints he set up here on the table in the calm environment of the, tra of the trailer and I'll just finish the few things I need to do in the foreground to, to complete the painting so I'll turn the camera and we'll get going on that part of the video oh, by the way thanks for liking uh, if you've liked and thanks for subscribing if you subscribed I really appreciate it Now, get this set up. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I um, retaped it. I had untaped it, but I've retaped it again. I'm just going to put some detail down the front. And I'm going to use my um, boxed paints to save putting out new ones. I'll just go get them. Uh, I'll show you in the distance. Lots of caravans white ones lots of motorhomes like ours white ones <laughs> anyway i think every now and then someone makes a colored one but it doesn't sell so they go back to white so i'm not going to bother looking at um any photograph because i kind of need to see you <laughs> i like the idea of being able to see you I need a chair hold on i'll get a chair no, oh, no, I won't. That's silly. I'm going to work standing up. Just have to have up a bit higher. And what I'll do is I'll hold the paints up so you can see what I'm doing. So that way you can see the painting. I'm pretty sure you can see the painting. Let me get around that way. You can see me. And you can see the paint. Yeah, okay, that's good. And you can see my environment. And I'm whispering. Bob's asleep, honey's asleep. So um, I need to make, I need attention at the front and I need a little bit of detail in the buildings. So my attention at the front, um, here I go. I'm gonna, I could use the lid, but the lid has old paint on it, which I haven't cleaned up yet. Give me a minute, I'll clean that up. Clean my brush dip into the purple okay so I'm mixing that in that lid it's a pretty messy way to work but I've only got a couple of little things to do so I'm not going to bother setting up for, for a full painting session so I'm going to put some shadow lines in here because I just feel that there was more sticks and stones to be seen and I didn't put enough in and I want it darker so I'll just put a few strokes like that. I'm also going to darken the sand towards the foreground. That works really well. That's a 
traditional thing to do. So I'll mix a little bit of um, burnt sienna in with that purple that I just had. So I'm just going to rub it across there. Then I'll wet my brush and blend it up as if you were using watercolour. Okay. Now, wash the brush. I'm just going to let that run down. I'm going to use the fact that the board is on an angle and clean that back off. And then I can make some decisions about how strong I want it to stay down the bottom. Okay. Don't go into there. There's a the tape there. Still got lumps and bumps from this thin paper that I used. And I think I'll add a little bit more warmth over here to the yellow. So I'm not looking at the photo. As I said, I'm just working off the seat of my pants, so to speak. Just looking at it and going, oh, that would look nice if it was more warm. So that's good enough. I'm just going to put some warmth in there. And then once again, wet the brush. Spread it round into, so it goes into the paper. This is sort of the reason I love working on paper. Soaks in. Looks very sandy. Now I'll probably come over that with a bit of white. Hopefully the white's still got a bit of um, liveliness in it. So just a dab it into the white. Put that into those creamy yellowy colours. I'm going to go yellow. I might, I might overdo the yellow and just see what happens. Okay. Yeah, nice and warm. Oops, got people coming around. What a potential audience here. Okay. Now I'm going to start getting very thick um, bits of paint. So a handle of a of, of a scalpel. This is very much make do. So I'm going to put some um, brown. Just uh, started to contaminate that yellow before. decide what I'm going to use here so it'll be just my favorites I guess that's what I'll put out see if I need them all I might not need them all if I don't I'll scoop them back in again that way nice lumpy pieces like that I can um, be very handy back up here so as you put abstract colors in the foreground here you need to play them back into the distance so that it looks realistic it looks like what's there otherwise it just would look like a weed pile out the front so I'm going to run it down into there as it gets back there I will blend it so if the idea is it's it's um, in sharp focus in the foreground and then gets softer towards the back same here Now, so what I'll do, dig into my white and just start blending that in. So the colour is there, but it's going to become a, a minimal part of the story. And this is the beauty of the acrylic, and this is where it starts to look more like your oil paint. In so much as it's thick, it's opaque. Just here and there, I don't want to hide too much of what I've done already. I'm just incorporating these bright colours into the foreground, making it much stronger. But around the back there was a little bit of a mystery to me, so what I'll do is mix up the blue and the red. I hope you can still see this. A bit more blue. So just a combination of you know, when you mix everything together, you get mud. <laughs> well, do that. Go a little bit towards the blue side of it, and you get a lovely grey. I'm just going to put elements of blue in there because I know that was a dirty 
dull kind of colour. I've still got rocks that I can play with. Now, out of this combination of colours, I'm just going to add, I've got a clean brush here and a nice flat one. I think you can see that. It's about half inch, it's a size, oh they don't have size, they're really cheap, it's a cheap brush. They don't have um, sizes on them. But what I'm going to do is, I want to put some details on these buildings. And I'm just going to, because I don't have photos in front of me, I'm going to make it up. A lot of them had, that they all have eaves. So under every roof there's a shadow. We know that. And I'm just dabbing into that neutral grey that I just made up. Some of them I'll put two storey and I'll put some columns down. I won't do that on all of them. I'll just um, front doors, windows, I suppose. Little dots for windows. Door, door there. I'm sure that one had a door. Window. That one had a, probably a peak. So you don't go too dark. If you did black here, it would look a bit weird. So. Keep it very loose. Oh, I'll just tap that because I've got colour on my, I like to just spread the colour when I've got colour made up. If I can, I'll spread it around a little bit just to help with the uh, variety. Although in this case, it's the same colour I used before. Okay, so that's a little bit more detail in those houses. The sea's fine, I think. I think I'm right here, but what I want to do is some very dark, say purple, bit of my black. These colours are beginning to thicken up so I'm going to have to keep using them quickly to um, keep them alive. If you don't use them in this method, in the box method, they will start to thicken. That means dry, dry up. So just trying to add a little bit of um, shadow under what could be stones and rocks here. And it's very abstract. So that's the paint. And I'm just doing very abstract little stones and paints here. St uh, stones and pebbles with the paint. Sooner or later my words, my brain and my words join up and they make sense. Okay. Having done that, I'm going to put a bit more white on my palette, mix it in with those colours that I've got. I'll go, I might go for a warm grey. So I've just done purple, white, and a little bit of yellow over the top of that. Just going to put that grey over the top, some of these stones I just put in, link them together. It's a weird colour. I don't know if it's going to work until I stand back. <laughs> some of that colour over here too. And I don't want brush strokes to show so I'm just doing a bit of scumbling with the brush which means playing around with that. I might just soften that up towards the back. See it's gone very dark there. It needs to come over all lighter. So I'll just go I might wet the brush and therefore make some if I wet it it's, I can make sharper lines. Hold that in there, so kind of looks like it could be the stones. I think. Oh, I don't know if you heard just heard that boat noise, but tomorrow we're going on a boat to get back to the mainland of Australia, and that's the spirit. It's called the Spirit of Tasmania. The boat. It's good fun, but poor Honey has to stay in the motorhome. She doesn't get to play around on the deck or anything. Not that we do. Now I'm just putting some more light on these stones here. I'll bring it down. Pretend there's a stone there, stone there. And I'll just do some lines. I kinda need lines, I think. While I've got white there, I'll run that in to the back. Oops, 
just realised that was not needed because that area there was a part of the sand that led up to, there's no water there, there was sand that leading up to that little mini ramp. I'd rather have that not be confusing. And I like the colour that's on my brush, so I'm going to just put that across there. It's very interesting. A little bit more white. You can never have too much white. Um, okay. Just trying to think of where I can lighten. A little bit of light. Oh, yes. A little bit of warmth up here. I've got a tiny bit of light brownie colour, burnt sienna and white. So I'll just throw a bit of warmth sorry, she knows, up here into this um, the stone area. Distant cliff. Sometimes a combination of the, the warm colour and the cool blue just gives a nice feeling. Same as the, the um, putting thick white over the top. At the moment it's a thin wash. So by putting thick white over, the opaqueness of that paint has a nice contrast to the thin washiness of the underpainting. I might just break up some of those straight lines I have where I just did a very quick um, sketch with that big brush. Not really anywhere. The sun wasn't, the sun was neutral. It wasn't coming from one side or the other. So. Okay. I'll stop there before I start going silly. Okay, that'll stop. That'll be the end, I mean. So, thanks a lot for watching this particular video it's a bit different because I'm the voiceover section and then finishing back and in, in the uh, at the motorhome uh, it's something that I do a fair bit of is finish um, plein air back home uh, unless I'm entering the painting in a competition plein air competition I don't think it matters that much so here's the painting it's a big one it's on paper I've stuck it onto board but I'll peel it off later it's easy to travel with when you're doing paper to do it on and just stick it onto a piece of board. You can do many of them in your travels. So I find that's the best way. Later on, um, I, well, I think I mentioned it before, I could stick this onto a canvas. If I think it's a good painting and I want to keep it, I'll mount it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Catch you in the next video.